Hey guys, it is uh, Thursday, June the 8th, 2023. This is going to be my futures recap. And uh, before we get into it, quick disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. I am not soliciting you to buy, sell, or transfer securities or derivatives products of any kind. Okay, so with that being said, I also want to get out the disclaimer that these video recaps are really for my own video journaling. I mean, maybe I'll get 50 views on the video, probably not. Um, please do not message me asking me for advice. I don't want to help you. I'm not interested in helping you. I'm interested in you being my liquidity. And uh, that's it. I mean, this is this is conflict. This is uh, this is war on a chart, and I'm not interested in losing anymore. So. It is what it is. Um, I get a lot of messages on Discord uh, whenever I start posting. Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? Uh, no, I'm not interested in helping you. And stop messaging me. Um, if you want to learn, you got to go watch ICT and you got to do the work. And I can't do that for you. And uh, you probably won't do the work. So why bother asking me in the first place? Because even if I were to tell you, you're not going to do anything with it. You're not going to be willing to do what it takes to actually start understanding what's going on in the market. Um, so, uh, before we get in the recap, I want to discuss something that's been on my mind about trading in general. It's something that I see on trading discords, uh, on YouTube, trading in general. And that is a sort of lackadaisical um, you know it is what it is uh, let it be sort of kumbaya attitude about this and I just want to say that for me I've noticed a, a distinct improvement in my trading when I got rid of that um, folks you got to aim for excellence um, whenever you take drawdown on a trade any sort of drawdown, there was something that you missed. And when you start to take a lot of drawdown, you, you, you definitely missed something. You did not read price correctly. And you, you know, you got to start aiming for excellent entries and excellent exits and an excellent read on price. This whole, well, it is what it is. We all have losing days. Statistically speaking, that is true. But you don't, listen, there's another trader on YouTube. His name is Brian Watt, and I don't know if he still makes videos or is alive, but back when he was making videos, one of the things that he mentioned was that the trade desk for JP Morgan, I think it was in 2020, reported that they had a total of eight losing days. That's eight. Zero eight. Meaning that at JP Morgan, they pretty much don't lose. Now, you're not J.P. Morgan. I'm not J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan essentially is the market. They have so much money that they basically are the market. It is the market. But what it's going to show you in principle is that you don't have to just accept failure, folks. Um, these markets are algorithmically delivered. They are delivered precisely. They are seeking objectives. They are creating repeatable patterns and you need to seek excellence and you need to stop thinking to yourself well I'm okay with uh, some of the things like I'm a very gambling addict sort of person I'm very impulsive and um, I want to get the action in right oh I want to make sure that my order gets filled I don't want to miss the move that that is the wrong way of thinking about it you want to search for excellence in your entries, in your exits, in your risk management, in your stops, in your analysis of price and time, and time and price. you got to search for excellence. So one of the things about any realm of human endeavor is that there's a principle called the Pareto Principle. It's also called the Matthew Principle. Uh, and it's uh, from, from him who has... Uh, from him who has nothing, all shall be taken, and to he who has everything, all shall be given. And that's describing a phenomenon in any realm of human endeavor, which is all of the success, all of it, is at the very top. 
in trading, we know that this is a 90-90-90 business, that 90% of traders will lose 90% of their money within 90 days. Folks, what does that tell you? That tells you that the vast majority of people who ever try this will lose everything, but there's 10%. Now, let's say that there's probably 2 to 3% of traders that just barely make money. They don't really lose money, but they're kind of break-even. Within maybe one out of a hundred, two out of a hundred, extreme uh, standard, we'll say aberrations or towards the tail end, there's excellence there. Every time that you take a losing trade, someone else was the counterparty to that trade. Someone else or some other algorithm, doesn't matter whether it's a human or not, let's just say another trader to personify it. It's probably not another trader, it's probably an algorithm. Uh, but let me be very clear. You need to personify it in your head. Someone else at that moment in time, whether it's 5-minute chart, 50-minute chart, 10-minute chart, whatever time frame you're looking at, someone was the counterparty to your trade and had a better read than you on price at that time, and that should piss you off. You should not be content with that. You need to seek excellence. That's it, folks. This is a Pareto principle area of human endeavor. And the vast majority of all the YouTubers that you listen to with the exception of one, and the vast majority of everybody that you see on social media, your friends, your internet friends, they're all going to lose everything. There's only going to be one in 100, maybe one in 200, who are going to make all the money. They make all the money because you seek excellence. Okay? When you're looking at your entries, you need to, uh, first off, one thing that I've noticed is that I cannot enter in at the market. If I enter in at the market, I have a substantially higher risk of taking a losing trade. So I only enter in on limits now. That's it. I only post liquidity. I do not take liquidity. I don't care if I missed a 5% move in the S&P. I'm not entering in on a market order because I know that statistically speaking, if I just enter in at the market, I... And I understand that ICT says he sometimes enters in at the market. I know for me, I'm impulsive, and I am not seeking excellence if, uh, if, if I enter in at the market. So anyways, this attitude that you see on trading discords and trading communities of, oh, it'll be okay, you'll be okay, that's bullshit, y'all. That's bullshit. You'll probably lose everything. Uh very quickly too. You'll probably lose everything very quickly. And if you do not search excellence, you won't find it. If you don't put in the, the study time, if you don't put in the grind time, well, I've got family to take care of. I got I got girlfriend. I got a wife. I got uh, I got things I got to do, man. I got I got this and that. I got to go smoke pot. I got to go drink. I got to be out with the buddies. I got to take care of my kids. Market doesn't give a fuck market doesn't give a fuck what distractions you have. If you want to be excellent at this, you've got to put in the time. You've got to put in the effort. You've got to put in the grind. You've got to put in... You have to You have to train yourself to be virtually an algorithm and, and see price on the hard right edge as it's forming and you have to search excellence or else you will lose. That's it. You are either taking liquidity and there's only a very small... We're going to say 1 in 100, probably 1 in 200. There's only like 1 in 200 traders out there. We'll say 1 in 200, a half percent, that make all the money. Okay, everybody else, 90% just blow out. 90% blow out their accounts. 10% don't blow out their accounts. Now, within that 10% that are not blowing out their accounts, probably 2 to 5% are just break even or just barely making money. There's only probably 1 in 200, less than a percent, that make millions of dollars. And it's at J.P. Morgan. And it's certain individual day traders. When you put a limit order in on the market, put it in for excellence. Put it in where you think that whatever algorithmic signature you're looking at, that's where it should go. Okay? Don't put it in higher or lower or front run it just because you're scared that you won't hit the move. No, put it where you think it should be. Seek excellence. Seek excellence in your trading. Do not be content with yourself that, oh, I, you know what? I took a loss. Okay, statistically speaking, yes, you're going to lose money. But you should not be glad about that or wipe it off. You need to analyze it. 
don't beat yourself up over it. Don't go into a depression because you took a loss or something that clouds your judgment like that. But go in there with a, with a, a firm mind and say, why did I take drawdown on this trade? Was there a higher entry on my short that made sense from a price, a time and price action perspective? Did I enter in in an illiquid session like the Asian session? Was was there some price algorithmic signature that I was not seeing, or did I enter in? Did I market smash, or or did I over leverage? Did I not manage my risk? Because if you don't do that, if you don't seek excellence excellence won't find you. It's not going to find you by hap- happenstance. And if you go on trading discords, oh, well, guys, oh, oh, woe is me. I lost, I lost, I lost. Market doesn't give a fuck. I got five kids I got to take care of, man. Market doesn't give a fuck. I got a, I got a mortgage I got to pay off. I got a wife who hates me. I'm getting divorced. Market doesn't give a fuck. I'm in school. I'm in college, man. I can't focus on this. I can't focus on excellence. Market doesn't give a fuck. Oh man, but I got I got a construction, you know, I got to go to work every day. Market doesn't give a fuck. Market doesn't give a fuck about you, about your excuses, about why you can't put in the study time, about why you're not studying time and price, about why you are not doing the things that you know you have to do to be excellent at this. This is this is a very difficult realm of human endeavor. And statistically speaking, you are going to fail. And if you follow retail concepts, if you follow bullshit like indicators and bullshit YouTube gurus and bullshit systems like volume profile, market profile, if you believe the bullshit that they're selling you, if you try to read these fake-ass news articles, you're going to lose. If you trade with a bunch of distractions going on, well, i got five kids and they're all screaming in the background. You know, i got my whole extended fucking family in the background screaming at me. No wonder you lost all your money dipshit. That's why you can't trade distracted. You must be focused. You must be watching for guys. The price is fractal. It's doing the same thing, whether it's on a weekly, daily, one hour, one minute, five minute chart. It's always performing. It's drawing to those higher uh, time frame draws on liquidity. And it's and it's also drawing on intermarket relationships. Okay. But the fractals themselves, the, the algorithmic signatures, are uh, they're fractal in nature, so they're happening on every time frame. The market doesn't give a fuck what your excuse is. That's it. And so if you got screaming kids, you got 10 kids, market doesn't give a fuck. I, that, that's basically it, y'all. Seek excellence. Don't be, you enter in and your order has drawdown. You didn't, okay, you didn't factor in the slippage or... Um, you 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 didn't adjust for something okay if you have drawdown of any kind but especially a larger drawdown you miss something right your idea at that time guys you might have the right idea for tomorrow but if you don't have the right idea right now it doesn't matter it's time and price and you need to be right right now <laughs> your analysis needs to be on point right now right when you're trading not later, not 10 years down the road. Well, 10 years, I think bonds are doing this. Or three weeks from now, bonds are doing this. Not when you're day trading, folks. You need to be right right now. Okay, so with that rant, seek excellence, y'all. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. Don't, don't, don't accept mediocrity. Don't accept what everybody else on YouTube and on Discord is doing. Don't accept it. It's, you know, there's a reason why 90% fail. Okay, and all those fuckers you read on Reddit, they're losing too. All of them. They're all losing, folks. And if they had a few good winning trades, they'll end up blowing it later. Don't worry. They will blow it. You have to search excellence all the time. You search excellence. You don't listen to others who don't know what the fuck they're doing, or maybe they got lucky once, or they sound confident. You have to do the work yourself. And don't come crawling to me either. I don't want to get messages all the time. Well, can you help me? You better fucking pay me or I'm not. I'm not. I, I've put too much work into this now to give it out for free. You got to do the work yourself. Go to ICTs. Well, his mentorships, uh, he rambles and he doesn't get to the point. His videos are too long. I think I'm going to go watch some other guy who talks about it. Well, then you won't be excellent. That's fine. If you're okay with mediocrity in trading and in, in what you want to do with your life, that's fine. Be mediocre. 
they're most <laughs> the vast majority of people who try this are mediocre, uh, if not worse than mediocre. So don't seek excellence in trading. That's fine. You'll be my liquidity. I don't give a fuck about you, and the market doesn't give a fuck about you. Okay, that's it. Let's get on to our price action review. All right, so let's talk about uh, what the ES did on Thursday's session, and let's start with breaking down our uh, midnight opening price. Okay, so the ES opened up at, uh, what is this? Four two seventy and a quarter. We end up trading down, coming into the Frankfurt session. We traded down. We formed a uh, little bit of a Model Twenty Two here, so we broke structure. Uh, coming into London open, we ended up breaking structure and then pushing into these stops here to the left. So we ended up trading above. Where's my arrow? So price broke structure here in the London session and then ended up targeting these stops. So you know, depending on when you would have gotten in in your entry, uh, a model 22 entry would have been somewhere around here around 4270. Uh, if you would have gotten in earlier, so if you'd seen that price had formed, uh, this is on a 15 minute chart, I'm not going to go lower because I'm going to go through multiple products, but on a lower time frame, if, you would, if you'd come in on Frankfurt Open, you're looking at uh, reasonable 12 points on this long, and then after you, you saw that the London session broke structure and then traded back into fair value gap, that's a model 2022, 20, um, you're looking at uh, about seven points. So overnight session, we did a little bit of manipulation in, into the new financial day, which was setting up uh, a somewhat bullish market profile, right? So we manipulate uh, coming into Frankfurt, manipulate back up in London, take out some stops here on the left. Our next key time of the day is going to be our news embargo lift at 8.30. And so let's take a look and see if we had anything on our, uh, our next key time. So our next key time is going to be right here at 8.30, so this 15-minute candle here. And so what we end up seeing is that at 8.30, price came up after trading back down before the news embargo lift, and at 8.30, we, we just uh, swept some stops here up at 42.77 and a quarter, so we, we swept some stops. So let me get... So just a quick trader terminology for you. Um, this is this move up here uh, at at uh, eight thirty news and Margo lift is what we call a sweep. So what is a sweep? A sweep is just a poke above a prior swing point. So that's not really getting high enough to really work the liquidity that is up above forty two seventy nine, but it's just enough to grab it and maybe maybe you know move us lower a few points, right? So that's what a sweep is. A run is is where, like for example, here later in the day, we actually fully trade above, and price starts working these orders um, above a prior a prior swing point. So that's kind of the difference there. A sweep is going to be a shallow run or a shallow poke, and a run is going to be a, a more thorough uh, break of structure. Now, sometimes I might mess up and and call the two the same, but technically speaking, in terms of the lingo, that's the difference between a sweep and a run. So 
so had you gotten short on our news embargo lift, in terms of the 15 minute chart, you had a couple of different levels that you could have been looking at to get to get short here going into equities open. So number one, uh, we have the rejection block here. And you could have gotten short on this uh, order block. And then other than that, we see that uh, price was working this fair value gap here. We'd already re-delivered it in this candle, but we hadn't um, come back and rebalanced it. And so this 830s candle was doing that. Now, in terms of getting the actual top tick, uh, th this would be, uh, if you're forecasting, you're anticipating price, this is something of a three drives pattern. So you could have had, uh, and back on that discussion of excellence, you're thinking to yourself, there's no way that I, I could have I could have foreseen the top tick of this. Well, yeah, you could have because you'd seen that there were two prior highs that are nice and symmetrical like this. And we see, we know that 830's equity is open. is probably going to be some sort of manipulation, right? So we know we're expecting some sort of volatility. And then if you're seeing these two prior highs, remember that, that a three high pattern here like this is a three drives pattern. And it's basically uh, a generation of liquidity because every time it does this, it's it's generating uh, buy side liquidity. So if you had anticipated, uh, we, we talked about excellence, and the real excellence here would have been anticipating a three drives pattern forming, which it did, following a break of structure on this overnight structure. And then we ended up trading back down into this fair value gap that I'm, I'm moving around with my cursor. So could you have top ticked this? Yes, you could have top ticked this. You could have also entered in at the, uh, the top of this uh, order block here. You could have even entered in and been profitable just at this fair value gap, but realistically speaking, this fair value gap had already been re-delivered, and price was not in a bearish trend. It was in a at this point it was in a consolidation profile, so we're not really expecting that this sort of IOFED or just a simple gap fill is is going to actually reverse price. So uh, there there was an, a, an ability for you to seek excellence here and and get be on a limit short prior to our 8:30. Uh, our 8:30 volatility. I'm just telling you to seek excellence, and that's you could have, you definitely could have anticipated this. So coming into our uh, equities open, and I'm going to highlight two candles. I'm going to highlight the. Uh, let's see. So these are 15 minute candles. So let me see. This is equities open, and then 15 minutes after equities open. So what is price doing here? So number one, remember at 8.30 that we created this high, and, we, and we, we took out, we swept, we did not run, we swept the buy side liquidity. So we just came up, we grabbed a little bit of the stops up here, and then we swung lower. So what is this? This is called a purge and revert or a seek and destroy profile. What is a seek and destroy profile? Seek and destroy profile is basically, okay, we're going to come up, we're going to purge the buy side, we're also going to come down, and we're going to purge the sell side. So it's just purging both sides of the book, clearing out some of the liquidity. Why would price do that? Well, price would do that, or the market would do that, in order to make the market more illiquid, in order to reprice it higher faster. Remember that a more liquid market meaning there's more orders, the depth of market is thicker, is more difficult to reprice. Uh, you, it, it takes more contracts, more cash to do that. Uh, so when you purge both sides of the book, it makes it easier for price to get repriced where they already wanted to take it. When I say they, I basically mean JP Morgan, but whatever. Uh, I might actually just start calling it, JP Morgan wants to do this. You probably don't believe me, but whatever. Um, that's my theory. I, I think that JP Morgan is the market. <laughs> uh, I think that's why that JP Morgan had eight total losing trading days one year, because I think JP Morgan is the market. So anyways, the market's going to come up and it's going to, it's going to purge both sides of the book to make it more illiquid, clear out some of that liquidity so that on equities open, it can quickly reprice to where they wanted to take us. There you go. So could you have gotten in here on this Judas swing down on equities open? What did we see here? So number one, 
we saw that our 830 manipulation played out as we expected it to. We also saw, okay, what do we see over here? We're looking for excellence, folks. We're looking for, uh, none of this is random. This is all purposeful. Uh, ICT says the wicks do the damage. Don't worry about the wicks. There, I, I personally think that they, they, they even know, y'all, they, they price the wicks too. None of it's random. Anyways, so 15 minutes after our equities open, what do we do? Well, we come down into our, basically our, our London session. And what are we doing here? Well, remember that you're always battling the, the market, or JP Morgan, is, is trying to cannibalize fish that are a lot larger than you and your one contract and your your demo account. Believe, that's what's happening. They're, they're picking up liquidity from large funds as well. And so even people with a lot of money and funds with a lot of money use a lot of bullshit that doesn't work, and then J.P. Morgan capitalizes on that. So what does the market do here? market's going to come down. It's going to knock out some of these trailers. Now, what is what do I mean by trailers? Trailers means people that are currently in a profitable position, like a profitable long, they probably were biased long coming into the day. Uh, you know, oftentimes retail, to a certain extent, can can get the direction correct, but they don't get the timing correct. And if you don't have the time, you're fucked. So what do we see here? Well, anybody that had been trailing their stops from any of these points here, those stops are going to get picked up as counterparties to... Uh, J.P. Morgan's longs. And so that's what we do here. We come out, we knock down, uh, we pick up some of these trailers as we're, as we're purging b both sides of the book. Now, in terms of getting long here on the equities open, wh what do we see here? Well, first off, in a lot of days, your London session is going to form your low. Now, we actually formed it uh, before the London kill zone. However, this area that we see in the London session, this is this is balanced, all right? Lots of up and down price action. It's an efficient market. And price does not have a need to go back through an already efficient market. It can, but it doesn't have a need to do that. So we're expecting this efficient price action, action to act as support. If I were playing this and I'm seeking excellence, I'm, I'm really seeking excellence, I, I think that looking at the 15 minute time frame the PD array that I I think I would have seen would have been this order block right here maybe right here 4267 I think I could have seen that um, also that same fair value gap that was worked in the overnight session remember that uh, this is not supply and demand so the, the same the same sort of setup can be used twice the same PD array can be used twice so the actually price comes down and it, and it gets through that fair value gap, references that same fair value gap again. And if you know your ICT well enough, you know your smart money concepts well enough, you could have bet on this same exact fair value gap from the overnight session. So I think you could have gotten in on this. Now, let's block out our uh, next time that we look at. So let's look, let's look at New York lunch. So. Coming into New York lunch, we'd obviously been uh, trading up, trading up in the AM session. Now, could you have gotten in on a long on this candle? I think so. I think so. Number one, this is a fair value gap, right? So price is going to want to come. It's going to be attracted to it. It's going to be drawn to it. We also expect that during the New York lunch, we expect. Okay, we anticipate, we don't react, we anticipate that during New York lunch we're going to have some sort of manipulation similar to our 8.30, similar to our 9.30, similar to our London and our Frankfurt. Probably going to have some sort of manipulation uh, during the New York lunch. Probably not going to be as large as uh, equities open, but uh, nonetheless, we expect it. So we see that price had formed this order block. And what is an order block? An order block is basically a lot of traders or orders that are betting that the market, for whatever reason, you know, is going to turn back down. 
and they end up getting trapped. And if you apply the break the break even principle, basically everyone that had sold here sold short or covered their covered their longs. Uh, as the market moves away from them, they're gonna they're gonna end up putting their uh, their stop loss basically their cover order is gonna be right break even to wherever they they sold short. So that's that's the theory behind the the order box. They they are orders basically. They are orders resting orders similar to above old highs and below old lows. They're just orders that you you are expecting that break. That a lot of, of trades that are now underwater, they're going to put they're going to put that stop right at break even. So that that's what's happening there with orders. Similar to why you know they also hunt trailing stops. All the stops, the static stops, the break even stops, the trailing stops, they're all going to get hunted, folks. They're all going to be cannibalized, not because they're hunting you specifically, but because the algorithm knows how human beings operate and it takes advantage of it. So it's always hunting liquidity. That's why it's going above prior highs and prior lows, and it's hunting trailing stops, and it's hunting break-even stops on these order blocks as well. It's hunting liquidity at all times. Okay. So could you got in on the lunch manipulation? We ended up wicking down into this fair value gap, consequent encroachment. Um, I think you could have seen it. I think you could have seen it because at this time, when we look over at the left, what do we see? Well, we see there's a fair value gap here on the left on this 15-minute chart, and we haven't re-delivered it yet. We haven't re-delivered, and we haven't rebalanced it. So good chance that we're probably going to continue going higher. We also probably want to go test. Remember, the, the stops, the liquidity, is it? there are static stops, there are trailing stops, there are break-even stops, and there are big figure stops. So we're also looking at 4,300. And we know there's probably going to be liquidity there simply because, oh, that's 4,300. That's a big round number. For whatever reason, we know that our, our big fund traders that J.P. Morgan is hunting, we know our big fund traders are going to use something stupid like a, a big figure. Well, I'll just put the client's funds. We'll, we'll, put the, we'll put the max loss up here up around 4,300. So remember that J.P. Morgan is hunting everybody who sold short here. We're hunting them all. Like everybody's got to get cannibalized, y'all. That's what that's what JP does. So JP's gonna find you. <laughs> JP's gonna find you. And you thought that you could just sell short here in a long-term position and, and hold your stop up here around. Oh no, son. Market's gonna find you. JP's gonna hunt you down. Gonna hunt down that liquidity all the time. That sweet, sweet liquidity. JP's gonna find it. It's going to hunt it, whether you're a small retail trader that's caught up in the wake, or you're a big institution, you're a big fund, you're a pension fund, mutual fund, you're a big shot with millions of dollars in client funds. Either way, JP's finding you, and he's hunting you down, and he's getting that stop. So, anyways, um, over here on the left, we have a fair value gap. That's an imbalance. Price comes up, rebalances it, trades back down into this group of orders here. And we ended up wicking back down and pairing. Now, I personally believe, what are we doing here? Remember, we're aiming for excellence here. We're not aiming for uh, retail bullshit for, um, we're, not, we're not aiming for mediocrity. We're aiming to have a deep, nuanced, quantitative understanding, an academic level, a technical science understanding of what price is doing. And why JP is doing what it's doing. And so we anticipate multiple things. So number one, why does price form these lows down here? Why did it do that? Why did JP have us come right down and form these equal lows? Because JP knows that in the overnight session here, what are we what are we forming here? What is this? Why do we pair lows? Oh my goodness. Everybody in the overnight session who's now everybody who's long from lower on Thursday's equities open, there's the stops, there's the trailing stops. Everybody who's getting long in the overnight session, where's the stops, there's the stops. All the stops. And they know that before, listen, this is what the algorithm's doing. I'm just going to call him JP. This is what JP Morgan is doing, is JP knows. He knows you're gonna, he knows you're going to put your stop there. Okay, all right. Whether you're trailing from longer lower, and whether you have 
five dollars or five billion dollars it doesn't matter everybody's looking right there oh look at those equal lows I'm gonna put oh, that double that's a double bottom right there and put my fucking stop right there JP's gonna find you he might not find you right now in the overnight session because it's illiquid and that might make it a little bit too obvious but JP's gonna find you these are definitely gonna get hunted but but guarantee you JP is thinking JP's thinking up here he's thinking up here Okay, I've personified the market, by the way. I'm, I'm calling the market JP, which stands for JP Morgan. I was in JP Morgan Chase, probably the largest privately held commercial bank in the world. So it's a good chance that whoever's driving the market, it's probably JP. That's why I'm calling it JP. JP knows there's long-term stops up here, y'all. So I mean, we might get another run up above 4305, but I know that we're going to come back down to this 4283. I know it. In my deepest of souls, <laughs> that is not going to remain, y'all. No way. No way. Jose, is that 40, uh, what is this right here? That uh, 8350, you can bet the fucking farm in it. Don't actually do that. It's not financial advice. Keep your farm. But JP's going to find this. He might, he might take us up above and generate some liquidity. Uh, in order to, th we'll probably need to generate some liquidity, generate some interest, maybe get up to 4302 or so. This could be a three drives pattern. We're, we're definitely going to find this 40. Uh, these these folks down here that are sitting in these profitable longs tra or trailing up their stop from lower, they're all going to get hunted, folks. JP's coming for you. Okay. Um, anyways, our lunch move, we ended up rebalancing this fair value gap over here. We trade back down during the lunch hour. We expect manipulation in the lunch hour. Repair the lows. We work this. So what does what does JP do? JP's working this block of orders right here, and he's picking up the break-even stops. He's picking up maybe on the lower time frame some of the some some trailing stops. He's working this consequent encroachment. He's working this imbalance right here. This long wick. That's an imbalance. But he's working this range of orders on these break-even stops in order to pick up the liquidity to drive us in the PM session, which is exactly what happens. So what do we see in the PM session? Come into the PM session, and JP's got a few different targets. Number one, um, all the fuckers that thought they were real clever putting their stop right here, JP's going to find you, and he does find you. And you, you have a quick profit in the lunch hour because you think, no, oh, JP can't find me. JP can find you. And he's going to find that stop, and he's taking it. And so he does. So we end up working in, and what do we see over here on the left? Well, this is an inefficiency right here. This is an imbalance, this long wick. And price needs to come in and work this back to the buy side and then back to the sell side again fully to rebalance it. So that was another thing that we were working up here. In addition to that, what do we see up here at our high? That's the volume imbalance right there. Right there. That 4301.25. But JP doesn't stop there. Okay? We trade through the volume imbalance. We get a few ticks higher. What do we have right here? Well, that's going to be a rejection block up there. There's going to be orders here that are sitting there resting as, as uh, stops just prior to the, uh, the last liquidity pool. So there is cash up here to grab in order to drive us lower. So that's what the market does. Okay, uh, in Q. All right, so the market trades, uh, we get a manipulation lower during the London session. Um, as we come into the new financial day, we manipulate lower, we break structure, come back down, and where, my friends, does price bounce? Right on this, right on these orders right here. This is what, it, this is 715, my time, or 815 Eastern Standard. We come in and we work these sell orders right here. What do these sell orders represent? Well, Remember that J.P. Morgan is on both sides of the market, so it's probably J.P. Morgan's just playing itself. But anyways, um, there, there's going to be traders uh, 
that were betting that this structure right here was going to continue, right? And so that's why they were selling short right here. But what actually ended up happening was that, as usual, the London Open manipulated a bit. We manipulated in Frankfurt and London. We break structure. And so all of the folks that were betting short right here, right on this candle I'm highlighting, when price comes back to work these orders, what orders are sitting on that block? Break even stops. Okay? So above old highs and below old lows are what we call static stops or pending stops. They're long term stops, basically. But there's other stops that JP's going to find. And JP's probably honestly hunting himself. <laughs> I mean, they have so much money that. It's, it's probably just they're different. Anyways, um, but we'll personify the market just for better understanding um, to make it more human, right? Humans learn through personification. Difficult to understand abstract concepts. So we personify the market as JP. Probably accurate, but even if it's not, if it helps you understand what's happening. All of the, all of the traders that bet that this market was going to continue trending down, they went short right here in this candle. So as price broke structure and we came back down, number one, we had a fair value gap sitting just below that range. Okay, So we, we formed a Model 22, formed a Model 22, trading back below that New York midnight price, and we trade into this orders right here. And what is that right there? That's a spring, folks. All of these break-even stops, they're getting triggered. And who's the counterparty to that? JP. JP is the counterparty to all of these break-even stops right here. Okay. And what is JP targeting? All of these fuckers. Where are these fuckers? Let's find them. JP's going to find you. All of the fuckers that trailed their stops and they were short. And all of them are going to get hunted. All of them. They're all going to get hunted. They're all going to get swept. And so all of the people that were trailing their shorts and the, and the trailing stops... Here, and here, and here, and here, and here. They're all hunted. Okay? Now, in addition, remember, you can kill multiple birds with one stone. What do I mean by that? Well, JP is going to... It's going to solve multiple problems with one price swing. So not only are we cannibalizing the liquidity of the trailing stops, but in addition to that, we are rebalance, re-delivering... Okay, we re-deliver this fair value gap, and then we trade back down against so it. We rebalance it. So, these the market is doing multiple things at once. It's cannibalizing liquidity, but it's also rebalancing itself to get it back to a fair price relative to other asset classes, relative to whatever whatever JP is thinking at the moment. JP is going to do. So, you ask yourself, well, could I have gotten in on this move? And I think that an excellent trader, absolutely. A trader who's not bullshitting and seek and uh, okay with mediocrity, I think a trader could have gotten in on this move. Number one, if you were awake at this time, or even if you were, these little tiny order blocks at the very end of the move, where you know that traders were betting on that trend to continue, and look at look at this, we can even hunt retail concepts, y'all. That was a trend line right there. Okay, trend line somewhere in, the, right there, they got hunted. So. Anyways, um, and by the way, even even big funds with a lot of money, a lot of clients' money, are are using bullshit that doesn't work. Listen, there's one thing. I've been in academia my entire life. I'm a licensed attorney, and most people are more stupid than you think. Even if they have money, even if they work at a hedge fund, and even whatever. So you think that just because it's an insurance company or it's a pension fund or it's a mutual fund, they, you know, a pension fund or a passive trader, surely they must be using more advanced concepts than you know they're not. They just have a lot of money, but it's their client's money. It's not their money. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a flying fuck about you. So you think like, for example, remember, a, a trend line is, is like the most useless bullshit, but it's the most common retail concept, right? You think that people with billions of dollars, millions and millions, big funds that JP is cannibalizing, 
would not use something simple like a trend line. Like, yes, they do. Just because they have a lot more money than you doesn't mean they're smarter than you. Okay? They're just salaried employees that go to go into work every day. They're not seeking excellence. Okay? They're just going to work every day. Oh, there's a trend line here. Looks like the market's coming down. Looks like we're rotating out of tech. Blah, 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 blah. J JP's going to find you. Okay? And even big money, even big funds, JP's finding you. He's hunting all your stops. All of them. You thought you could hide? No. No, he's finding you. He's finding you. He's finding all of you. Okay? And he's taking your fucking liquidity. That's what he does. That's why JP Morgan doesn't lose. Period. They probably actually lost the eight days of trading that they lost on purpose, to be frank. JP Morgan is the market. So, anyways, JP Morgan doesn't lose. So, multiple birds with one stone here on NQ. Beautiful Model 22. Trade back into these orders. We take out all the stops. Russell 2000. We're going to analyze that. Let's analyze Euro futures. Let's see what JP did here. Come into our new financial day at uh, midnight New York local time. Frankfurt Open is pretty uneventful. We end up uh, trading above some stops here. And we also see that there's an order block here to our left. So there are some uh, break-even stops here to the left that obviously got triggered. This price came up. That was our liquidity to go down right over here. So if you were long here, right, you're long at 107.235. You're long. You're betting on that. You're betting on this bullshit trend line to continue just like that. You're long from right there. And you want to, you see that the market's moved against you. Okay. It's moved down. So now you're in a loss. You're taking heat. You're losing your client's money. You're losing your fund's money. You're nervous. You put your break even stop right there, right? And what do we do? Just come right up on pre London open, 15 minutes for London open. Okay. We grab it, your break even stop. That's, you are the liquidity for JP to manipulate London open lower. And then, what do we do? Rebalance this fair value gap here. Okay. And right there, remember, London open is probably the most manipulated open. Like, it's the most, it's deceptive, it's mischievous, it's, it's uh, most, I think, the London Open is the, is the open that is going to be the most likely to drive in the opposite direction of whatever the intended direction for, for that day is. So what does JP do? Okay. Well, JP is going to come down. It's going to rebalance this fair value gap right here. We're going to work some of these orders. Okay. We're filling, we're rebalancing this fair value gap, working some of these orders here. We're also taking out any, any aggressive or or tight stops. So JP is going to do that right there on London Open. And that's our catalyst to move higher on Euro Futures. And what are we targeting? Oh, lo and behold, you thought you could hide from JP. You cannot hide from JP. It's going to find you. So you thought that I'm a long term. I got my. I put my. I put my retirement savings in my. Uh, my head. What is? What, I put it in. Uh, a passive index and I make about 5% every year. JP doesn't make 5%. JP makes so much fucking money it's it's unreal. So your your 5% a year boys, your your passive boys, right? Your long-term sort of boring traders. Where's their stop, folks? It's right there. So what do we do? What does JP do? He finds you, he takes you out to the woodshed, and he knocks you out. Okay? And that's what he's doing. He was knocking you out here, comes down, fills in some imbalances, and then he finds you. You can't hide. You can't hide from JP. Okay? Now, what I'm trying to say with that is I'm trying to personify that the market can move much further than you think it can. No matter how far away your stop is, the market will find you. I use JP as my personification for JP Morgan, but I'm using that as a personification for, quote-unquote, the market. 
And so there's liquidity here, okay? Big liquidity, big liquidity, like long-term bank traders that have put stops, just put stops right here, okay? And guys, these are employees for banks, okay? They're employees for insurance. They're boring people. They're not searching excellence. The guys at JP, JP Morgan, their trade desk, they are searching excellence. And so they're hunt, they're cannibalizing other funds. They don't care. They don't give a shit. They don't give a flying fuck about your one Euro Futures contract. They care about big, big money, other funds, institutional size, millions of dollars. All right, millions, billions of dollars. That's what JP cares about. And someone like JP Morgan needs to have counterparties to its shorts if we are to go lower on Euro today. Where do they get the counterparties? Where do they fill in huge amounts of orders? They're coming right up to hunt other funds. Right there. Long term stops. Hunted. Okay. That's Euro. We saw a similar on the British pound. It's the same story over and over and over again. You think you can hide from JP? I'll put my stop far away. I have millions of dollars. I'm a big fund. I'm an insurance company. I'll put it up here. That's where all the books tell me to go. Hunted. Hunted. Routed out. Found. Taken out to the woodshed. Liquidated. Okay. Um, I think I'm almost done with this video. I've been ranting a lot. Um, very similar concepts on on gold today. Gold made a, a, a beautiful, beautiful move. Um, we see that we saw the same thing in all the metals. Um, big, big, beautiful move on uh, silver. Um, basically, JP was doing the same thing, just hunting, just just on the prowl, hunting, hunting all those all that liquidity, just hunting it. And so, that's going to be my market recap for today. I'm getting a little bit tired with the voice, so I'm done. Um, listen, if you want to keep using your bullshit volume profile, uh, you know you've advanced from you've advanced from trend lines and MACD to volume profile. Okay, that's not searching excellence, but if you want to keep using it, that's fine. Uh, that's not what JP's using. I promise you, that's not what JP is using. JP has enough money to where it moves the entire market to where the liquidity is. And that's exactly what happened here on silver. Silver is one of the most known manipulated markets in the entire world. It's extremely manipulated. What is a manip But it's more obvious in silver than really a lot of other asset classes. If you know the history of silver and the Hunt Brothers, it's very, very manipulated. The price of silver at $24 an ounce, y'all, Silver should be way higher than that, like $50 an ounce. I mean, with the current inflation, silver is being artificially held low. By whom? J.P. Morgan. J.P. Uh, so, anyways. Um, crude oil. I mean, similar, similar story. I'm on our hourly chart. Um, we manipulate during the overnight session. We come out. We take, we take a little bit of the buy side liquidity. And then we end up trading down, working this uh, imbalance that we have on the left. We're also clearing out some of the sell side liquidity. So a good, um, a nice seek and destroy profile here on crude oil. We are, we're clearing out both sides of the book. It might be a sign that crude oil wants to make a, another decent move is if we're clearing out liquidity on, on both sides of the book. JP might want to take us, uh, reprice us into a new range soon if we're clearing out both sides of the liquidity. So that's going to be that. Uh, bonds, similar story. I'm getting pretty tired, y'all, so that is it. Uh, please don't message me. I don't want to help you. I'm not interested. Um, I've got a few guys that I talk to, and that's really all I'm interested in. Um, if you want to keep using your bullshit trend lines, that's fine. Um, you're going to be my liquidity, and I'm going to roll with you. I'm going to try and roll with JP now. <laughs> that sounds really stupid and immature. I'm sorry. But anyways, yeah, you can keep using your bullshit that doesn't work. I don't give a fuck. Um, that is that. Again, I'm not helping you. Uh, you got to put in the work yourself. You got to go watch the ICT mentorships. Uh, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. I'm not geared to help you. I'm not interested in helping you um, unless you pay me, in which case, maybe. But um, that's it. Uh, this has been a recap of the futures market today. I'm sorry I rambled. Remember to seek excellence. Don't accept the mediocrity. 
follow what JP's doing. JP will guide you. Bye-bye.